Hey guys, so, um, yeah, make sure that's not zoomed. Sorry. Here is the uh, LED cube connected to an Arduino I built. If you can't see it, there is the AT Mega 328P microcontroller. Just to point out some obvious facts here, this is our LED cube. It's 3x3, three three. uses little red LEDs, are not bright, but they work. You have three buttons connected up to the Arduino pins. I'm not quite sure which pins uh, right now, but I'll post the specs on my uh, blog in the product. In, in, sorry, the um, what you might call it, project post, whatever. I get that confused with Sparkfun's product post. We have a little power switch, but this isn't connected because what I'm going to do eventually is create a, take a little USB mini B jack and put it somewhere and then wire that to the power switch. But right now it's just programmed. It's powered through this header which is meant for one of these, those uh, FTDI cables, or I just use a little adapter for a USB cable, but it goes in here, and right now it's just powered through the FTDI. Th FTDI. It's got a 16 megahertz oscillator down there, um, filter capacitor, and a 0.1 microfarad, this is 0.1 microfarads, and this is a 0.1 microfarad for connecting the auto reset of the um, programming header up to the reset of the microcontroller. Now the ways this cube is multiplexed, which you probably are curious to know, is all the negatives of the LEDs, this is the way that Make Magazine with Brie Pettis did it a long time ago. I'm not sure when, but it was several years ago when Brie Pettis was actually on Make. Anyways, it's that all of the negatives of each, of each so you have the, uh, the rows that are this, so all these three LEDs are in a row, then the next three, so the three levels, I should say, the top levels, you have top, middle, and bottom levels. All of the negatives from the top level are connected together. All the negatives from the middle level are connected together, and all the uh, negatives from the bottom level are connected together. Those then go to um, transistors, and they're hooked up so that the um, the uh, levels, the the cathodes of all the uh, LEDs on each level, are hooked up to the collector of the transistors. And I'm just using two N3 nanofours. The bases are hooked up through 1Ks to Arduino pins, and the um, emitters are connected up through 330 ohms, just because it was a generic jelly bean resistor value I had laying around, to ground. So that means that when it's when the Arduino pin is low, the transistors are not connecting, thus the negatives for the column, or for the uh, level, excuse me, are not connected, thus the level cannot be lit. If the transistor is powered to high, as in, if the Arduino pin is set at high, the transistor will connect, and it'll be the equivalent of setting the negatives of all these LEDs to ground. The positives are connected in, like, straight down, so the positives of this this LED, that LED, and that LED would be connected together and then connected to the Arduino. This LED, this LED, this LED, so in sort of vertical columns, if you will. They're connected together. So that provides for a decent multiplexing arrangement. I know there's many more for RGB LEDs, regular LEDs, you know, you can even get 4x4s and 8x8s and, you know, a billion by a billion, what have you. But that's just the um, simplest multiplexing way and the only way, really, I know for a 3x3. I have a 10K pull up resistor on the reset pin of the Arduino just so it doesn't automatically reset all the time. And then the way it works is I have the transistors hooked up to some pins, the um, bases of the transistors through 1K hooked up to some data pins. I have the buttons hooked up to the next data pins. And then because the, um, I think this, this cube uses up three more pins than there are digital pins, three of them are connected to the analog pins. But in case you didn't know, you can use Arduino analog pins as digital pins. I think the last digital pin is 13, so analog pin 0 is going to be digital pin 14. So you can just treat it as if it was digital pin 14. Very simple. So that's it. And here's the bottom. And yes, it, it is working. And I'm working on programming it. That's Those are the leads for the crystal oscillator right there. Um, and what it's eventually going to be after a long time. Sorry for that dead pixel again. I'm not sure what's wrong with my camera. But after a long time, what it's going to be is going to be three-dimensional tic-tac-toe. So one player, you're always going to start in this corner. And this button's going to move you forward, but not vertical. This button's going to move you to the right, but not vertical. And this one's going to move you vertical. So by pressing a combination of those, you could get your dot or your light to any LED in the cube. And thus, and then you could play three-dimensional tic-tac-toe, and one player would be blinking lights, and one player would be solid lights. So it wouldn't be that uh, complicated. But if 
what I found when I'm starting to write my program is that it would be very helpful in Arduino, you know, how at the very end you can say void whatever to create your own custom sequence. You don't actually have to write out that same bit of code every time. It could be like void. In my case, I, I'm, I really want to make a void clear cube just that sets everything to negative. That way, between every multiplexing cycle, I can set every LED equal. I can set the whole cube, uh, refresh the cube, basically set everything off. Because that'll only waste one, you know, eight millionth or sixteen millionth of a second, right, in my multiplexing, so it's not going to matter that much. So the way you would actually control this is that you would really only want to have one or two lights on at a time. So what you could do is you could set, you know, any of these these vertical, the, the anodes, you could set the anodes equal to one all you wish, right? So you set the anode combination you would wish equal to one, except you should really only have one anode on a time. So if you want this LED and this LED lit, right, then, and you want this LED lit on the top level and you want this LED lit on the middle level, if you light them both at the same time, you're going to get all these four LEDs lit up. So what you want to do is you want to light only this LED up and this LED up. So you light them up one at a time, and you could do, you know, one microsecond delays or ten microsecond delays, such that the human eye couldn't actually see the refresh rate of the cube. It might be picked up by camera, but your eye couldn't see the refresh rate of the cube. And then just to keep everything from shorting out, I have these little things. I don't really know what to call them. This is all hooked up using just regular stranded wire. That's really all I can think of to say about it. I'm going to make a separate video about how to actually use the FTDI thing to program an Arduino that's built onto a um, strip, that's built onto some strip board or whatever this stuff is called, but not, not how to program an Arduino outside of an Arduino board. Very easy. This is actually the first time I've done it. But you got to be careful with these chips, is there's um, a VCC and ground on either side. So I have decoupled the one on this side, I have it on this side, because uh, I've been too lazy to put a capacitor there. But you just got to make sure you put them on both sides, otherwise the chip won't work. And um, I really have no 22 picofarad capacitors on the, this crystal, but it seems to be oscillating fine. If I find that's an issue, I'll put the capacitors on there. And um, these buttons are low active so when you are not pressing them they're high and when you press them they become low and um I mean that's really all I can say about the cube I haven't really started to develop the final firmware yet I've just been messing around with it trying to get a feel for what programming this thing is going to be 